attack jewel used to be level one slot. Now it's just too fat to fit my demo belt. Hey, I'm Super Senpai, there's a lot of things I hate about Monster Hunter Rise. I already played 70 plus hours in Monster Hunter Rise, and I played over 1,000 hours in Monster Hunter World. Holy what the hell's wrong with me? So you know what? I earned the right to Let's start complaining right now. I do want to say for Monster Hunter Rise, they did take big steps from Monster Hunter World and Generations to get the game on the portable platform, which is great in a lot of aspects, but they did a lot of other aspects too. So here are the top five things I hate about Monster Hunter Rise. Number one, decorations. Look, I know in Monster Hunter World, decorations was really hard to find. You had to do a multiple different investigation to get more decorations. It was a grind fest, but it felt like it was fitting because you're giving an ultimate boost towards your armor to get those nice decorations. Like, I know the attack jewel was actually impossible to get at that time in the early stages, and I know weakness exploit and critical eye was a bit difficult, but it did take a grind for you to get there. And with Monster Hunter Rise, you could create the decorations right off the bat, and it's more accessible for everyone, so that's awesome. Except they decided to make a f you to you by making the decorations bigger than they should. Like, I can fit my hand inside this cup over here, like, I can fit my attack jewel in all my builds because I f it in. What the f you gave us a blessing and then you kicked us in the Diablos. You not only did this for attack jewel, you also did it for critical eyes for some reason. You know what's even worse? They made divine blessing a level 2 jewel. I wasn't even thinking of putting that in my armor build and now I can't. Wait, what the f? 4 or 2 is a fat level 2. That's like a f Capcom, none of us were going to use 4 or 2 in our optimal builds. You know what you can't fit in in most of the armors that only has level 1 slots? Defense jewel. All my build armors all have plus seven defense because I have nothing else to put in them. And also, why the f is weak dex exploit and critical boost not a f***ing decoration? I know there's going to be future updates and they probably will fall into those categories. But for now, what the f Capcom? You made Mind's Eye into a three-parter when originally it's just a one decoration. Why the f is shield a three-parter jewel set? Like, I can't even justify putting that in my heavy bow build because it takes up so much stuff. What the, what the f Why is Gobbler, the speed eating jewel, a fing level 2? That's the bigger move right here, Capcom. What? Okay, no. F you. Friendship is a level 2 slot. What the f Do you not want me to support my friends? I was thinking of checking my potion and share my friends, but if it's going to take up a level 2 slot, them. I'm going for the attack tool over that. I also do not like the talismans method. They basically got decorations and talismans in Monster in the World and switch situation. Before you just make it and it's like, oh, this is difficult. I have to just, you know, upgrade and I have to find rare pieces. Now the talismans are f***ing RNG luck, which I do not f***ing like. If one six of your armor is important, don't f leave it to RNG. I'd rather build a guild talisman than grind on decorations because at least decoration is an add-on. Talisman is better for you for optimal building. Number two, the armor. Okay, so I do not understand why they nerfed armor. Like, why do none of these armors have set boosts? Like, you know, like Slugger or Artillery Secret or Razor Sharp or Spare Shot or even Guts for f like, Guts is like, not, like, I would, like, come on. Instead, they gave us our armors. If you have the same armors, you get plus three, plus four, plus five resistance. Like, that f matter to me. I don't think I've ever used resistance in Monster Hunter games, except for Kieran, because Kieran kept kicking my but that was the only time I've ever used resistance. Like the coolest part about Monster Hunter is getting armor to mix and match. So in Monster Hunter World, you can have Nergagante, which you get two of the armors, and then you can get healing if you damage the monster, and then you get Bazooka if you get three of them, and then the Bazooka gets you guts. So that's like an incentive to mix and match armors. This doesn't, this literally just lets the armor be like, just complete like the chain. Don't, there's no benefit to having the whole armor sets. It's just mix and match completely. This just feels like I'm going to a Goodwill and just picking out clothes that don't have holes in them. Or I guess in this game, I guess you want holes so you can put decorations there. It's just, it doesn't feel the same in the previous games where it felt like the armor really didn't matter. This just felt like the armor was literally just because it had nice gloves and had two holes in it. That's why I picked that one. Also, why the f the Elder Dragon armor suck Diablos. I don't understand what the hell were you thinking made making that? Like the whole armor does not even have a slot. What the hell were you thinking, Capcom? Or I guess Monster Hunter technically was the company. I should be complaining Monster Hunter, not Capcom. Number three, mounting. Now I know a lot of people love the wire bugs, but I I personally just don't. Maybe because I'm a great sword main, so 
there's no real benefit to the wire bugs at all. We just, I guess we don't need walls anymore. But because of that, it just doesn't feel like Monster Hunter. It doesn't feel like I'm hunting with my own strength. Which, to be honest, I, I highly doubt I will do that in real life. And Monster Hunter, I used to love like jumping off a cliff or jumping off vines because I felt like it was kind of real hunting skills. But with the wire bug, it just feels too much of an anime where you're just flying everywhere and because there's no mounting at the end of the day. And that kind of disappoints me because I love the experience of jumping on and be like, whoa, oh my god, I'm on, I'm on the monster. Oh my god, what do I do? What do I do? I don't know what to do. Now it's like, oh, I can jump on that monster like a Megazord from Power Rangers. It, it just doesn't feel natural to normal Monster Hunter. That's, that's my... Yeah, for that. Granted, it is nice now that wire bugs allow you to dodge more and to do more aerial attacks. Also, in Monster Hunter World and all other Monster Hunter games, when you mount, you can mount, mount multiple times to the monster. I think I've only mounted monsters once in Monster Hunter Rise per battle. At least Turf Wars felt like it was Jurassic Park, and I know Turf Wars are in this game, but I rarely see them. <laughs> I always see the wire bug fighting over the Turf War, which just makes me sadish. Number four. Rampage. Look, if I want to play a tower defense game, I will have played Bloom TD6. All you do is set up arrows, you set up cannons, you shoot at monsters, you scare them away, you upgrade machine guns, you upgrade to a wyvern blaster, and then you repeat over and over again until the boss monster comes, and then you blow them up again, do the gong, do double damage, quadruple damage, and that's it. Plus, you know, support stuff, uh, Dragonair stuff, etc. It's just, it's eh. Honestly, I was actually borderline going to quit Monster Hunter on the first day when I was playing because I just couldn't get to the Rampage because people weren't understanding how the Rampage worked. But secondly, it just felt like it was a Monster Hunter. My weapon did nothing to the monsters. It was literally heavily dependent on the cannons, the arrows, the machine guns, uh, the wire bus. It just was the point. I could walk into the Rampage naked and it's the exact same result. There's no reward for you building better armor or better weapons. It just didn't feel like Monster Hunter. That's why I didn't like it. I know some people like Rampage because it changes the pace on like Zora Magnaros. But at least Zora Magnaros, it was just only one fight. This is the this is the golden egg for the game. This is the this is the final boss way they're gonna do the fights, which is disappointing for me because I don't want to keep doing rampages. They're not exciting as the regular Monster Hunter fights in my eyes. I want to fight an Elder Dragon or a Tempered Dragon with the armor I build, with the weapon I work my for. Not sit there on a gun just shooting for 10 minutes straight because that's how you're supposed to beat the monster. Hell, I even wore that Elder Dragon armor before because you know what? If I'm not going to use my ultimate builds, I'm just going to look nice while shooting the gun. Also, people online are so is stupid. Put the wyvern blasters at the end of the door so that when the monsters come, it automatically blasts them to kill them. Don't put them at the front when the monsters run past them. It's like, it's so f***ing easy. It's not rocket science. The game is called Defend the Wall. What should you do? You should defend the f***ing wall. And the reason why I'm still playing it is because I need to get those defense sevens just so I can get the bear talisman luck for the RNG gods because this is so Stupid, I hate the talisman. If it wasn't for the talisman issue, this wouldn't be a bigger well, this is still an issue. I just wouldn't have to do it every single time just so I can solve the other issue. Now, there's a lot of other things I can complain about. I feel like there's not enough unique quests. Right now in the game, there's a main quest you can play with your friends, and then there's optional, which is instead of one boss monster, you face two boss monsters. Which is like, okay, in Monster Hunter World, they have investigations, which encourages you to make more money or get more rare rewards, like in some cases, in temper is decorations or regular, just more material, so it's easier for you for the grind. I rather do a mission that has plus four gold opportunity for you to get a rare item, and then just doing the same mission over and over again. Because at least one, I look like I'm actually getting closer towards getting the rare item. On the other, I'm just playing the same game over and over again. That's why investigations it may feel like a bit different because it may feel more rewarding. This just felt like. They just put two quests on the board and they're like, have fun, that's all you need. I just want to do an egg quest with my friends online. I just want to do some stupid quests too. Or add a little twist in there, like, you know, time limit rules, the monster's bigger or smaller. And if you suggest arena fights for me, f you, no one plays arena fights because you're just playing a game where you don't get to wear the things you worked your off, the armor you worked on, the weapons you worked on. I don't like arena quests. <laughs> They also get rid of Piggy. I want my Goku Piggy back. They also got rid of non-elemental builds, which, eh, it didn't really matter. Also, where are my Elder Dragons? Are they hidden behind the DLC? Because all we got right now is uh, defend the tower Elder Dragon, and uh, we also have a platforming Elder Dragon, <laughs> which is like, what the half the time and just jumping up and down and missing it because it's a platform. It's a platformer. <laughs> also, why the 
Sure, it's never available for me. I don't know how to activate it. I have it. I just, I just never see it active at most of the time. Also, why did you choose the f***ing water guy instead of any other monster in the world or ultimate to add to this game as one of the monsters? Like, no one liked him, and we all know that. And then also, you gave us Lagrius. The knockoff. Granted, I do like this dragon a lot, it's very unique, but when I first saw it, I was just like, oh my god, it's my, one of my favorite back in Try, and then it wasn't. Good design, but I do want to see a Try throwback for the first Nintendo game, that would have been fun. But here is my serious number five, and it's the voices. Still have a long way to go. Holy f I regret picking a language I knew for my character to say. Past game, they just sound like they're moaning, which is like, oh, okay, that's, that's totally fine, whatever. Now it's just dialogue that's not funny. Why the f the match have insurance? And, and me, me. Why am I asking for them if they have insurance? Because most likely in this match, I don't have insurance in it. It's f***ing personal. I hunted this monster for 15 minutes. I'm 90% sure I look like a f***ing psychological stalker to that monster. Nice. I love hunting. Wait, what the f***? Is that Sandy Cheek's voice from SpongeBob? <laughs> Maybe I should just change the language to Japanese so that I don't understand what they're saying like all the animes I watch. But I think the biggest issue with the voices is because in Monster Hunter World, we use the voice command system in the Xbox. And that's what makes it so enjoyable. We get to talk to people, we know on the same page, we know when to set traps, we know what the plans are, we apologize, we tell people who suck when they suck. Guys, what the f Where are you guys? Go back. Go back. We discovered something new. Guys, stop doing <laughs> We're not first to die. <laughs> Monster Hunter on the console on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC brought a new life where we could talk to each other, and that's what made the game so exciting. With the Switch not having that ability, it kind of loses the magic. Oh, oh he's using oh. it. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, this time I'm actually close to the box. What? It. What? What? I, I was alive! I was alive! I didn't Did die! Did you all die? This is what's missing in Monster Hunter Rise, and I think this is the biggest part that hurts compared to the councils is, again, the chat. And again, I know PC's coming out, so everyone can chat in that system, and I do feel like PC's gonna be the better system overall, but it's literally because we don't have to hear voices from our players because we're so focused on talking to each other about each mission, what we're gonna do, and that's what I'm missing in Monster Hunter Rise is the fact that I get to talk with people in the hunt. I feel like I was community together. I felt like, again, the biggest part of Monster Hunter is fighting together. And I miss that aspect. That's like one fourth of the game too. If they do end up creating a voice chat system for the games when people play with random, that might make a huge difference for the game to make it more enjoyable for me. But at the same time, I do understand safety issues, Nintendo, all that stuff. So it may never happen in a Nintendo game, but may happen in the PC port. And this is my top five reasons why I hate Monster Hunter Rise. Maybe 10. I think I actually said 10 things I complained about. But don't get me wrong, it is a good game. And 80% of my complaints may disappear in the next year because of the new armors, the new builds, or the new accessibilities. Again, this game can change a lot. And right now, it's just the initial feeling that we're only getting one third of the game, not the full experience. There's still a lot that the Monster Hunter has changed in terms of quality of life in the game. The Palico and the Doggos make a huge difference for us in terms of fighting in solo and fighting online. The material gathering, the material drops are really nice because you can get things faster. And the biggest part is the drop in drop out games where anyone can join in as fast as they can. And then people who rage quit, you can replace it immediately after. So if someone just dies and says, well, screw you, that's your fault, even though that person died and ran away, you get replaced by someone who's like, yeah, I'm here to finish the mission. I don't care what happened. And that makes it fun because every mission is always going to be four people. And because of that, that just makes the game feel like it's whole. Because Monster Hunter game is all about the community, the people you play together. And that's what makes it so much fun. It looks like Monster Hunter Rise is going to phases where they start building quality of life to the game in phase one, phase two, phase three, which is great because they did that in Monster Hunter World and they did a fabulous job in that. They created the phases of like phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, phase five. They added events during the process so that it's more achievable to get rare items or more fun for you to do different experiences. Like I think my favorite one was the pig that like it was jumbo and just killed you right off the bat if you touch it. That was hilarious. However, if Monster Hunter Rise decides phase one, this is where you get the Wignan's exploit decoration. Phase two, this is where you get the critical boost uh, decoration. 
Thank you, Capcom. Don't make the decorations part of the DLC waiting period. Just give us give us the rest of the decorations next update. If you like this kind of rant, I know I'm very sweaty right now, but that's how energetic I am. Let me know what you think about Monster Hunter Rise in the comments below. And if you think my rants are irrelevant and I'm stupid, then tell me in the comments too. I'm more than happy to hear them. It's just bullshit.